<laughs> he actually looks like he has no idea he was in danger. Regardless, I attempted to halt the bloodshed. Well, aren't you a hero? Cease this at once, you two, I cried with composure. I never actually looked at something that was added to the stuff today. No, I didn't look at this. Wait, so is there anything? Weapon left at the crime scene, two rounds were fired. Fingerprints were what? They were wiped? Okay. Alright, press. Do my usual song and dance. Are you sure both men were able to hear your voice? They were, of course. My high, exquisite voice echoed through the park. And the victim responded to that clarion call. Quite. Let's see, turn to the direction of his voice. Did you hear the gunshot at the same time as the victim turned? Indeed. I would say about the same time, to be precise. And the victim didn't ask you for help? It can be said that he didn't have time to ask. He didn't even have time to take a single step. I'm totally sure that the killer fired because Mr. Stickler startled him. Don't say that too loud, Trucy, please. Hmm. A cowardly killer, the defendant, appeared to have become frightened. Oh. Can you describe the killer's actions more clearly? He seemed quite surprised, especially considering that it was he who did the deed. As we can see, human psychology is a tangled web indeed. He simply couldn't believe what he had done. He shot, he panicked, a common tale, but true. Unfortunately, before I could take further action, tossing the pistol aside, he fled from the scene. Oh! How can they be certain it was Waki? Given the fact the pistol... If Okay, if he had thrown the pistol down, it would be covered in his fingerprints, would it not? But it isn't. Instead, it was wiped, and he wouldn't have had time to wipe it if he threw it. Hmm. Something smells. So wait a second. Tisk tisk. Another misleading request. Yet your soul will hold into your own mode of discourse. You can't see how it affects you. Uh, come again? Wait a second, you say. A second? Are we intended to wait just there? A single second? One sixtieth of a minute? That's hardly enough time to draw a breath, let alone make a statement in the court. Now, had you asked for a longer period of time, say, three minutes, thirty-five seconds, that... Mr. Justice? Yes, Your Honor? Am I to understand you were objecting to the length of a second? Oh my god. <laughs> yes, I mean, no. Here, just look at the pistol. It doesn't have a single fingerprint on it. Ah, a common ploy made all the more common, I fear. By the prevalence of television. Criminals these days are loath to leave fingerprints. Wait, but you said the killer tossed the gun and ran. That's right. He didn't have time to wipe the gun for prints. Oh, damn. Ah, the little girl sticking it to the university student. There's a song in there. I'm not little. Then let's think like adults, shall we, Fräulein? Fräulein? I keep saying Fräulein. <laughs> eh? What if the killer, the defendant, was wearing gloves? He wasn't, because the knife is covered in his fingerprints. Gotta admit, I didn't think of that, Apollo. Well, Mr. Justice, could the killer have been wearing gloves? No way. The record of the murder weapon is very clear about one thing. The fingerprints were wiped, which means some trace of prints remained. Which contradicts your testimony. If everything happened as you say it did, he wouldn't have had time to wipe the pistol. Hmm. That may be, but it does not change what I saw. The killer, the defendant, he threw down the murderous weapon from his hand and fled. Hmm. And this pistol was found at the scene of the crime. Strongly suggesting that this was the weapon he disposed of. That sounds solid to me. Well, hair forehead. Any of your precious objections? What gives, Apollo? Let's see that voice training go to work. You know, I've only recently realised something. No matter how much you train your voice, it doesn't matter if you have nothing to say. What do you mean, nothing to say? Isn't it obvious from what the witness just said? Huh? Isn't what obvious? 
When he restated what he saw just now, he said he saw Waki drop a murderous weapon. But that's not the same as being 100% sure of what... Waki threw away. You're right. He's just confused because a pistol was found at the scene. Poor Mrs. Stickler. It must be hard to be so perfect and yet so wrong. Well, it can be said that I'm quite offended. <laughs> well, it is indeed true that one... Oh, okay, never mind. That's like, old bag. What we can say for certain is that the witness saw the killer throw something. Does the defence have anything to say about this? Well, if what he threw wasn't a pistol, then it had to be something else. At least one person on the defence team seems to be thinking. I'll wipe that smile off your pretty face, Gavin. Perhaps you can inform the court as to the nature of this something else. What did the killer throw away before, f before fleeing the scene? Twas the knife. Yeah, found at the... Find at the crime scene bearing Wookiee's prints. There you go. Is that a sword? It's a tiny fucking sword if it is. It's a knife. I saw one of those <laughs> on the late night movie last night. Great, a sleep deprived judge. <laughs> this knife was found at the crime at scene of the crime. With the defendant's prints on it. His prints? This single piece of evidence proves two important things. One, that what the defendant threw down wasn't a pistol. Two, the defendant wasn't wearing gloves. Hmm, indeed. Oh, hair forehead. You're forgetting two other things you've just proven. Huh? One, that the man the witness saw was the defendant, Mr. Waki Kitaki. Two, that the defendant was holding a knife with the intent of harming the victim. Oh, hmm, indeed. Never underestimate a Gavin in the le is the lesson here. Indeed. This, this court is of the opinion that our witness is fond of making assumptions. In that light, I believe it would behoove us to hear about what really occurred. With less assuming, please. It's always the same with you people. Mark left the house on foot and five minutes later his brother left after him. How long would it take for Mark's brother to catch up to him? Assuming that Mark never had to stop for a traffic light. Assuming. Yes, that's what I said. Assuming. As if that were a probable situation at all. Yet here you are assuming that my assumption is no better. <laughs> oh my. <clears throat> what this court assumes is that the witness will testify as to what happened after the shot was fired. From shot to call. I could not prevent the killer from leaving the scene. Nor could I simply leave the scene in good conscience. Ergo, I used my cell phone to call the police. Until the police arrived this at the scene ten minutes later, I saw no one else. Hmm. So why didn't you chase the killer? He was, as you say, a killer. Of course, I could have run him down, yet what would he have done when cornered? Sadly, it takes more than an aptitude for solving quadratic equations to know that. Hmm. Did the testimony earlier not prove the defendant's presence at the scene? And do we not also know, now know, that there was no one else there? It seems clear that we have our killer. Does it not? Does it not, Mr. Justice? I'd better find a way to take this testimony down quick. Okay. Press everything. From shot to call. Alright, okay. So which way did the killer run? By that time, it was clear the killer had noticed me. Naturally, he ran in the opposite direction. That would mean he ran in the opposite direction from the Kotaki Mansion. Actung! Don't even think about pointing out that he was going away from his home. All he had to do was loop back once he was out of sight. Yeah. How did he know that's where I was going? Okay. Nor could I simply leave the scene in good conscience. You were certainly composed for someone who had just witnessed a killing. If one is to devote one's life to the pursuit of science, one must never flinch at the sight of a little blood. Nor be so moved by a chemical discovery that one drops one's flask upon the lab room floor. Ooh, cool answer. Very cool. 
Hmm. So nothing strange about how he acted. Why is she... She looks like she has something to say. Okay. Ergo, I used my cell phone to call the police. Well... Wasn't your first thought to call an ambulance? It can be said that I have dabbled in medicine. The injury I witnessed, namely a single shot to the head, tends to result in death. Ergo, there was no need for me to call an ambulance. Oh, a perfect... I have no idea what that is. Silly... Syllogism? Syllogism? A proof in three parts. Exquisite. Simply exquisite. He actually looks like he's going to cry. Am I just pressing everything? Hmm. Until the police arrived at the scene ten minutes later, I saw no one else. Can you tell us in detail about these ten minutes? I stood in a state of heightened awareness. Anything could happen at any moment. Anyone could appear from any direction. Is... is that all? No one came. Nothing happened at all. I saw it all. Which is to say, I saw nothing. It was late at night. It's not odd to think there would be a few... There would be few people around in the park. So he just stood there, watching. Hmm. Not much to go on there. Trudy, if you've got something to say, by all means, say it. I can't find a single problem with that testimony. Had enough at last, hair forehead? Maybe it's time to back off a bit. Sure. There's nothing fishy about the testimony at all. It appears that there are no object or there are no objections to the witness's current testimony. There are a number of ways, or any number of ways, to explain the lack of prints on the pistol, I assure you. Perhaps the killer really was wearing gloves which he wiped or which wiped the previous user's prints off. Then, after the deed was done, this fell out of his pocket as he was throwing the gun away. A mistake befitting of a small-time punk, in my opinion. No. <laughs> no! Oh, God. It seems we come to the end of the line. Or the end of the line here. No. That can't be at all. That can't be all. How unfortunate. It seems that you weren't cut out to stand out... Or stand on the same stage as me. Were you, hair forehead? I believe this brings a cross-examination to a close. This court will now declare a verdict for the defendant, Waki Kitaki. What the fuck? Oh dear. What? Trucy. Nobody move. What's the meaning of this? Who are you? There'll be no verdict in this court. Not yet. Wait, are you one of the Katakis? The Katakis? You mean the notorious gangsters? You don't want to see me give the freak little girl a new smile, do as I say. Adjourn the court for 20 minutes. What? This court will not bow to pressure from the likes of her judge? I see little point in further aggravating this gentleman. Um... Recess, 20 minutes. Or I promise you, you'll regret it. W wait how do you disappear so fast? Come to the defendant lobby, Apollo. What? I suppose I have no choice but to adjourn for a 20 minute recess. Bailiff, catch that mysterious man. I'm very confused. What happened? That was weird. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, I keep forgetting I always have to overwrite the save. My bad. Ahem. Trucy, Trucy? You move quick, Apollo. Good show, good show. Tr Trucy, you're okay. I thought... Don't cry, Apollo. That's good for nothing, gangsters. There are some things you just don't do. I'm pressing charges. Wait, just calm down, Apollo. Or else... <laughs> what 
What the heck is that? Surprised? This is one of my best tricks. The amazing Mr. Hat. You look marvellous, darling. <laughs> He's a big hit on stage at the Wonder Bar. Yes, I am a big hit. Well, what do you think? Do you like it? You mean you... Trucy, there are some things you just don't do. I... I'm pressing charges. Apollo, now is not the time to be threatening me. It's you who's been threatened here. Huh? Remember what you said to Waki's father yesterday? Oh, yeah. You promised you'd save his son. But that testimony was rock solid. What are you suggesting I do? Look, once the judge declares a verdict, it's all over. If I can use my talent to stop that from happening, I will. Trucy, no more staged abductions, please. I'm not talking about magic, Apollo. I know when the witness isn't confident, I can perceive what he's feeling. I might not... It might not mean anything, but it's all we've got. You can see what he's feeling. Think back, Apollo. Think back to the times when there was a contradiction in his testimony. All the times. All the times there was a contradiction. Okay. Hmm. I think I remember them, sure. There were two times when he made statements he wasn't confident in. And each time, there was a contradiction. In his hand he held... Yes, a pistol. It was pointed at the man pulling the stand. Okay... Tossing the pistol aside, he fled from the scene. He said the man tossed a pistol... Uh, tossed aside a pistol. But it turned out it wasn't. He wasn't sure, and sure enough, there was a contradiction. Well, that's true, but how does that help us? Did you notice anything? Whenever he made a statement he wasn't confident in, he displayed a certain habit. Flicking through the book. Wait a minute, he squinted. In his hand he held, yes, a pistol. It was pointed at the man pulling the stand. Oh! Did you see it? The very moment he said the word pistol, his fingers got all tense, and he fiddled with the corner of a page in in his book. How am I supposed to see that? Well, I could see it. How else do you think Daddy went seven years without losing a game of poker? What? Oh. I always sat next to Daddy during big matches. Was that not cheating? I could see what his opponents were feeling. That's the same hand from the first case. You mean that's how Mr. Wright won all those games? It's not cheating, officially. I wasn't looking at their hand or anything. And I wasn't there all the time either. Daddy's quite good at poker, after all. But not good enough to go undefeated that long. Great, so he cheated. But what does that do for us? I don't believe this. You have to listen to his testimony one more time. No, scratch that. You have to watch his testimony. Perceive the truth. Watch a testimony. Perceive the truth. The only thing I'm perceiving is that I'm going to lose. Not true. Daddy said so. He said you have the power, Apollo. Mr. Wright said that? Watch the testimony. Perceive his true feelings. Is she serious? Time's up. Sorry I can't think of... any other way out of this one, Apollo. What was that she said before the trial started? Huh. Mr. Wright's not here today. He said his old foot injury was acting up. Yes, he smiled when he said we'd be fine as long as you're there, Trucy. Is this what he meant by us being fine? Well, methods aside, she did avoid one guilty verdict already today. Time to show this cult what I'm made of. Get ready for justice. Okay, in we go. Let's do it. Apollo. You know, I'm starting to think I can do this. I knew you could do it all along. Oh, one more thing.
Try to cover for Mr. Hat as best you can. I just flew in from the coast. And boy, are my arms tired. Right. Uh, oh my god. Mr. Hat. He had a black cape. How does that work? That's a fucking a very loud thing, though. Right, we're back. Car is now back in session. Right, we're fine. Ahem. I'd like to say to the young lady standing next to you, Mr. Justice. Oh, you mean me? Don't you have anything to report? Anything concerning the mysterious phantom in the silk top hat? Ah, right. Him. Don't worry about him. I settled that. You settled that? Uh, yeah. It was an out-of-court settlement. Right. Perhaps Frau Lane would have us believe it was nothing more than a passing dream. A fantastic illusion. Now you see it? No, you don't. Am I right? I think he's onto me. <laughs> I wish you would stop being so... So cool. Let us dispense with these niceties and get straight to the matter. What are your plans for our gifted witness? Right. The defense would like to request another cross-examination. Because... Because I forgot to ask something. Really? There was no issue with the witness's previous testimony. I will grant your request, however... But this court will not permit stalling for time. Understood. Your Honor. Don't forget, Apollo. When he isn't sure about something, he has a habit of fiddling with his book. I need to watch his fucking fingers! Did not prevent the killer from leaving the scene. Nor can I simply leave the scene in good conscience. That was the only time he was playing with the book. There we go, I used my cell phone to call the police. Every other time he wasn't using the book, so... It's statement three. So, I'm not sure... I'm qualified to watch testimonies after all. Focus, Apollo. Find his weak spot. Focus. If only it were that easy. My ears hear what he says. My eyes see his expression. Do I have to do something more? What other senses do I have? Oh god. What's this? My bracelet. Oh! What's going on? My bra bracelet feels different somehow. I think Daddy was right. You can see it, can't you? Apollo. You're almost there. Find the weak spot in his testimony. I know this sounds crazy, but my bracelet is trying to tell me something. Okay. From shot to call. Yeah, he only plays with the book. Hmm. Yeah, only on the third statement. I don't see anything with the fingers. Nothing changed. Sure. So you called immediately after witnessing the murder. The police undoubtedly have a record of the call. Why not check with them? Wait, Apollo. This has to be it. Wait, you mean his habit? Don't forget, Apollo. When he isn't sure about something, he has a habit of fiddling with his book. Yet yeah, we know. He only fiddles on one statement, so... The only time he even had the book open was here. Which means this is a place to look for his habit. I don't know how I know, but I know. Know what? It's my bracelet. It's different, somehow. I can feel it reacting to something about the witness. Your bracelet? Whoa! I'm not sure I get this focus stuff you were talking about, Trucy. But I have a feeling that trusting my bracelet is the way to go. Okay, I just need to touch my bracelet as it reacts to the testimony. What the fuck? Oh wow, this is weird. The music's such a, like, haunting melody, too. What's going on? I can see the witness's face. His expression, his expression so clearly, it's filling my mind. I can see nothing else, hear nothing else. Apollo? Drusy, what's happening to me? This is what I meant by focusing. Focusing? In this state, you can see everything, Apollo. Everything the witness does. That's great, but this is kind of freaking me out. Just look for Mr. Stickler's twitch. His habit. You remember it, right? 
Sure, when he says something he's not sure of, he fiddles with the page of his book. Got it. Right now you're looking at the witness's face. And your eyes are sort of bulging out, uh, bugging out. I'll bet they are. First, move your focus of attention down to Mrs. Tickler's hand. His hand? You know what to look for now, but you have to be looking at the right place. She's right. I can only see his face like this. Time to try changing my viewpoint. And how do I do that? Oh, I use this. Oh, I just... Okay, touch. Perfect. Now you're really ready. Ready for what? Ready to perceive the truth behind the twitch. Perceive. I try listening to the witness... I'll try listening to the witness talk as you focus. Then watch for his habit. Right. You mean when he fiddles with this page? Or with the page? That's right. That's your signal to look closer. To perceive. Find his weak spot and I guarantee we'll be able to give him the royal flush. Spoken like a true Pokerhead's daughter. I'm a magician, thank you very much. So I have to pay attention to his words. And his fingers. Don't worry if you miss it, you can always try again. Right. Look out, nervous twitch. Here comes justice. So, ergo... Oh, there! Oh, right! I used my cell phone. Gotcha! <laughs> gotcha. I really wish they added bitch. I know it wouldn't be, a, like, for all ages, but it just would have been so much more fitting. Gotcha, bitch! <laughs> uh, I saw it. Just now, I could see it. Mr. Justice, do you have something to say? Oh, all this banging of desks, it's quite bad for my circulation, you know? Mr. Stickler, allow me to ask you a simple question. Why did you fiddle with the page of your book just now? The very moment you mentioned your cell phone. But what are you talking about? I'm curious now about the cell phone of yours. Mind if I ask a few questions? Hmm, what to ask, what to ask? Ask to see his phone. Mr. Stickler, please show me your cell phone. Uh, why? Whatever for? Show me and you'll find out. Well, I can't. I don't 